Hi, I'm Bob. I hope you are doing well today. We will solve the exercises for the second part of Chapter Four about the effects of an increase in income on optimal consumption bundles and demand curve. I want to thank you for joining this channel and watching the video. Let's get started. This exercise two point one. It is about bequests. Illustrate how an increase in your parents' income affects their allocations between bequests to you and all other goods. In two related graphs, where one shows an income consumption curve and the other shows an angle curve for bequests, the indifference curve. Budget constraint diagram and the angle curve diagram are as follows. As the income increases, parents allocate income on more bequests Q1 and more other goods Q2. The income consumption curve is an upward sloping straight line. The corresponding angle curve for bequests. Is also over sloping. Let's do exercise two point two. The consumer always puts half of a sliced banana Q one on his bowl of cereal Q two. The two goods are perfect complements. What is His utility function derive his demand curve for bananas graphically and mathematically. For perfect complements, the utility function is the minimum of a q one and b q two. In this case, q one is bananas and q two is cereal. A equals two and B equals one. The reason is that half a slice banana Q one, or one bowl of cereal Q two, gives the consumer the same utility if they are used together. So the utility function is as follows. The optimal bundles are the points where the highest indifference curves touch the budget lines. The optimal bundle is E1 initially. When P1 decreases, the consumer purchases more of both goods at the optimal bundle E2. We can trace out the demand curve for bananas. The optimal quantity of cereal demanded is as follows. The optimal quantity of bananas demanded is half of cereal. It is the demand function for bananas. Let's solve exercise two point three. According to the U.S. Consumer Expenditure Survey for two thousand and sixteen, Americans with the lowest ten percent of incomes spend forty one percent of their income on housing. What are the limits on their income elasticities of housing, if housing and all other goods are normal? They spend two percent on cell phone service. What are the limits on their income elasticities for cell phone service, if cell phones are normal? The weighted sum of a consumer's income elasticities. Equals one. Using this weighted income elasticities equation, we can figure out the problem. Suppose consumers spend income on housing Q1 and all other goods Q2. Theta one times C1 plus theta two times C2 equals one. 
where CETAs are the budget shares on goods, and Cs are the income elasticities of the goods. We know that CETA1 equals 41%, so CETA2 equals 59%. Since all other goods are normal good, its income elasticity is above zero. Then, theta one times C one is between zero and one, or the income elasticity of housing C one is between zero and two point four four. By the same reasoning, we obtain the income elasticity of cell phone surface. Between zero and fifty. Let's find answers to exercise two point four. Given the estimated Cobb Douglas utility function in exercise one point seven. Derive a typical consumer's angle curve for movie DVDs. Illustrate in a figure. From the Cobb Douglas utility function, we can write the demand function directly. For DVDs Q2, we can write income as a function of P2. And Q2. This is the equation for the angle curve for DVDs. In the angle curve diagram, the horizontal axis measures the quantity of DVDs, and the vertical axis measures the income. The slope of the angle curve is 2.5 times P2, which is fixed when P2 is given. So. The angle curve is an upward sloping straight line. Let's go to exercise two point five. Derive the income elasticity of demand for individuals with a Cobb Douglas, b. Perfect substitutes and C perfect complements utility functions. For Cobb Douglas utility function, the interior solution is as follows. The income elasticity of demand for Q one is one. We can use another method to get the result, taking the logarithm on both sides of the equation, and using the partial log expression of the elasticity, gives the same answer. For part B, the perfect substitutes utility function is as follows. In the case that P one is lower than P two. Consumers spend their entire income on Q one, so we have the demand function for Q one. Taking the logarithm on both sides gives the income elasticity of demand one. In the other two cases, we cannot obtain a specific elasticity. For Paxi, the perfect complement's utility function is as follows. The demand function for Q1 is Q1 equals y divided by P1 plus P2. 
using the same method, we have the income elasticity of demand equal to 1 for both goods. Let's solve exercise 2.6. The consumer has a constant elasticity of substitution utility function. In part A, what is his income elasticity for Q1? In the first step, we use the tangency condition to obtain the demand function for Q1. In the second step, we use the income elasticity of demand formula to get the answer. The income elasticity of demand for Q1 is 1. In part B, derive his angle curve for Q1. The angle curve shows the relationship between the quantity demanded for the good and income, holding prices constant. Income is on the vertical axis and the quantity of Q1 demanded is on the horizontal axis. We have already got the demand function for Q1. Rearranging the demand function gives the function for the angle curve. The slope of the angle curve is a function of P1, P2 and rho, which is a constant if they are given. So, the angle curve is an upward sloping straight line. Let's finish exercise 2.7. The utility function is quasi linear. Derive her angle curves for the two goods. We know from previous exercises that there could be interior or corner solutions to the optimal consumption bundles for a quasi linear utility function. In the first step, we use the tangency condition to solve for the optimal quantities of the goods. We find that income Y should be higher to ensure positive consumption of Q2. In case 1, if Y is higher than 4 times P2 squared over P1, then the interior solution is as follows. Q1 is independent of income Y. The angle curve for Q1 is a vertical line at the quantity that is determined by the prices. For Q2, we can get the function for the angle curve. It is an upward sloping straight line with a slope of P2. Next, we consider another case when income Y is low. We have the corner solution. The consumer spends her entire income on Q1 and purchases no Q2. So the angle curve for Q1 is an upward sloping straight line with a slope of P1. Thank you so much for doing the exercises with me today. See you tomorrow for the next part of Chapter 4 on Demand. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.